Ever since I was little, I've always been fascinated by breaking things apart. So I used to drive my parents crazy with uh, taking apart various kitchen equipment and pens and anything I could get my hands on. And in a sense, I felt that that was the same with Latin, that you're really breaking a language down to its most basic, intricate level. When I was in school, I was quite lucky to be around very inspirational teachers, especially in Latin and Greek. The thing that excites me about classics is the chance for a kind of holistic study of a whole society. I always liked uh, reading li literature, um, understanding it, um, but with Latin um, I found that I could combine that with my interest in language and sort of see how literary meaning, as I would say now, could be conveyed in, in a different language, which I found absolutely fascinating. Um, but I was also interested at school in things like history and sort of, I suppose, bits of philosophy, I'd sort of heard of that, um, and I discovered that at Oxford you could do basically all these different things together in one degree. There's much more of a chance than other universities to really study texts in detail in the original languages and for this the four-year course is essential. The first half is called Moderations, known as MODS, which you're examined on in the second term of second year. And once you've completed those, you go on to grades. While the course is more rigid in the first half, it is really serving both as a chance to study two of the greatest uh, authors of antiquity, Homer and Virgil, as well as to get an introduction to all the different aspects of classics which you can then study in more detail and as you like in the second half of the course. I have suddenly been offered on a plate a whole range of different things that I didn't know existed within classics. One key point to stress about the classics course at Oxford is that you can take it without having studied either Latin or Greek to A level. For those who take up the language from scratch, you have five lessons a week, um, which is very intensive and very full on. But at the same time, it allows you to really gel with other people on the course and get to know people very quickly. Whether you're reading a text sort of as literature or, or whether you're reading um, an ancient historical or a philosophical text, um, we just think that's absolutely essential for really getting to grips with what these Greeks and Romans are, are trying to say, the, the concepts that they have and how, how they express them obviously can be translated but can't be translated perfectly and you just have so much of, of a clearer understanding um, of that when you're working in the Latin and Greek. Although I'd realised that there was quite a lot of language-based work, the sudden requirement to read these dozen books um, quite often in the original did seem to absolutely sort of blow my mind. The classics degree is itself so in many ways can be counted as a joint course because it involves a component with philosophy which can include modern philosophy so that's one distinctive feature about it. Almost weekly I get emails suggesting that I go on various archaeological digs um, both at home and abroad um, and you have you know visiting lecturers every week doing a complete range of things some of which may not be included in your course but you might find interesting. I was fortunate enough last summer to spend three weeks in Athens. There are lectures and seminars and tutorials of course that you have to go to but a lot of it is to do with self-study and self-discovery. One of the things I've enjoyed the most while here is having the opportunity through the Oxford Classics faculty of organizing a university-wide Plato reading group we are the largest classics faculty in the world. I mean, what does that mean? It means there's somebody here doing anything, um, which for undergraduates means that you, you really can be taught by experts um, in whatever um, area you're interested in. The library facilities for classics are extraordinary with both the Bodleian, uh, which receives a, a copy of every book published in the UK, but also the, the specialist classics library, the Sackler, which has a, a great lending facility for undergraduates. But in addition to that, most of the colleges will have got very detailed classics libraries of their own, which have been developed over the decades to cater for undergraduates. It sounds very basic, but a most wonderful online system called Solo, which allows you to research books, articles, and find them anywhere in the university in any library. As soon as you arrive at Oxford, you meet with your um, tutor and you're given a reading list and you're told to write an essay about some topic that will be due in a week's time. And you're literally just left to your own devices after that. A lot of it, when you first step into it, can seem very daunting, particularly with a tutorial situation where you're handed an unseen piece of Latin and you're told to translate on the spot. 
you get to spend time one-on-one, -on -one, perhaps two-on-one, -on -one, with a great expert in your field and you really get to bounce ideas off of um, your tutor. It is intense, it is full on, and at times you can sit there feeling absolutely stupid. But at other times, there's that wonderful moment where your tutor's face lights up as you say something that is at least vaguely intellectual and interesting that sparks conversation. The tutors, more often than not, are learning from you at the same time, so there is a certain, I think, intellectual respect. Every week you'll have at least one essay um, along with various exercises in grammar to do. Um, so your days are definitely filled, but that's not to say that there aren't a few spare minutes or indeed hours to uh, dedicate to other pursuits. I'll usually have about two days to devote to reading material for each essay and then one day for each essay actually to write it. A thing that I have developed or discovered um, most significantly is the capacity to speak up and speak out um, for whatever you think is correct. At the moment of application, you have to choose to apply to course one and, or course two. So we have people coming from all sorts of different backgrounds at school, um, some who have had the chance to learn both Latin and Greek to A-level, um, a lot who have just Latin and no Greek or sometimes vice versa, um, but it's also totally possible to come to Oxford and do classics, do this degree with all the different bits in it, um, if you have neither Latin nor Greek um, to that level, um, if you have neither Latin or Greek at all. Um, and what happens then is that you pick one language, um, we don't make you learn both intensively to, to start with, um, but you learn either Latin or Greek um, up to mods in the second year and then you can add in the, the other language afterwards. What I'm looking for in applicants is a combination of uh, talent, commitment and imagination. If, you, if people have got those three, they're doing pretty well. Uh, hopefully if you are interested in coming and doing classics at Oxford, you'll be interested in classical stuff and in the ancient world. Um, so, so go out and find out uh, as much about that as you can following your own interests. Um, go to museums, if you have a chance ever to, to, to see a classical play. Um, read things, of course, um, books about ancient history or, or works of classical literature and translation. Um, the other thing is if you have any chance to develop your language learning skills, if you get on well at interview and actually enjoy it, in a sense, um, although it's terrifying at the same time, I'd say that's a really good indicator that you're suited for a tutorial system. We're not looking for people who are going to rehash stuff that they have picked up at school, for example. Um, so it's important to listen to the question and to try to answer that particular question and to think about that question before you answer it not to just rush into answering the question that you would have liked to have been asked. I suppose one thing that might be at the back of your mind in the interview is, am, am I enjoying this? Am, am I um, having a proper conversation in which I am both learning and feeling that my contribution is, is being listened to? Um, and if that's the sort of thing that you enjoy about the interview experience, then hopefully that's, that's something that you'll um, continue to, to enjoy when you get here. Oxford classes go on to do an extraordinary range of things. Many of them uh, pursue careers in uh, the law, uh, go into, uh, become barristers, solicitors. Uh, many of them pursue, uh, go into the city. But, they all, but many of them go into uh, teaching, or really a whole range of activities, into charity work, into, uh, I've had a recent student going into the 
army. I've got a, a, a recent student working for the Labour Party. I think one of the wonders of the classics is that it just opens so many doors, um, which a lot of people don't often realise. They think, oh, it's a dead language and a dead civilization. What could possibly be useful about that in the real world? But it's the skills you learn whilst studying it that can be applied then to life beyond Oxford and beyond study. Ultimately, what I would like to do is to be able to teach at some level. I think that it would really be wonderful to sort of inspire students in the same way in which I've been inspired. It's seen by employers as a very valuable, rigorous degree that really sets people up for anything. If you've been excited by Greece or Rome, even if you've just watched a, the old film or two about it, if that experience of classics has given you some sort of ex intellectual excitement, then I think there's a good chance that this is a course you would enjoy and that you should look into it in great, greater detail to see what it has to offer you.